Welcome back to the channel guys. The goal of this video is to get this radiator sorted out. It's, I have not been looking forward to this. It's like the roughest looking thing on, on the machine when I bought it. And you I mean, you can see all the fins are bent and it's just, you can look at those fasteners on the bottom. There's just been dirt sitting there for decades. You never know though, it might be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up the pressure test. And if, if it actually passes, then I can just straighten out these fins and clean it up and, and be done with it. This side right here is the oil core. Um, that I know for a fact is shot because when I was pressure washing it, oil was shooting out of it. Not gonna use it anyways. The, the oil core or the oil cooler is pretty much just like it's obsolete with modern oils. Already took the fan shroud off. It looks pretty good. This will clean up really nice. There's no, I mean, it's, there's nothing that's rusted through. So that's a good sign. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. A lot of the passages in there are, are clogged up. So we might put some acid mix in here. Oh boy. Yeah, you know, I'd be surprised if this thing holds pressure, but if it does, yeah. The more I see this, the more I don't like it. I already found that this cap doesn't really hold any pressure. Uh, so I got some uh, plumbing fixtures here. Thoughts and prayers, here we go. Get up to 14 PSI. Uh-oh. We, uh, we got two and a half PSI. I'm hearing noises that, that don't sound good. We got some bubble leak here. Oh no. Yeah, we're already down to zero. I think we know what that means. I'm not gonna lie, I have kind of a bad feeling about these fasteners. They look pretty rough. And the other side's worse. Like these are just straight up missing material. Missing material, oh, this one's not too bad. Let's see if we can get this one loose. Oh, it's turning. Oh man. I. I feel like that just snapped though, the way that turned. There's no way that's loose. Maybe. Yeah, maybe this won't be that bad. Yeah, it's coming out. All right, let's try another one. Yeah, it's uh, just the top. So let me hit this with some penetrating oil. That'll probably not help, but at least make me feel better about it. Now, this is really just warm up for the other side. Because if you think this side's bad, you should probably turn off the video when you get to that side. Oh, it's turning. Oh yeah. Too easy. I was contemplating coming in here with a torch and cutting the bolts off, just leaving the studs out, but uh, I'm just worried about, I mean, it's better to try like this because if I get it out, then I only have to do this once. Otherwise, it's just another step that is probably gonna be harder. This is actually not bad at all. We'll see how the front side goes. Just to give you, oh, there goes my fingertip. Just to give you an idea of how corroded these are, uh, this is a one size less box wrench. So this is a half and these are nine sixteenths. So that's how much material has corroded off of here. And I just lost part of my knuckle. Uh oh, that one's not moving. Ah, I got four holdouts here. So I'm going to weld the nut to them. I do not have a good connection on there. That's better. Oh. Yeah, this is not gonna be hard. There's two holdouts left, 
So I'm gonna get my scalpel out in a sec and cut them off. But before I do that, I just wanna say, the reason I'm comfortable doing it is if you look at these bolts, it's really right here at the top in this spreader. There's like a spreader bar right here that they're getting um, corroded. So assuming that I get the spreader bar off and I cut these heads off, it, they should pop out pretty easy with a uh, vice grip. But I'm just, I was worried about getting in the same situation I was with the undercarriage where I cut the tops off and then just the entire thing is rusted in. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Should really get some welding gloves. Yeah, this should just pretty much pop up now, right? Oh no, I've melted the core. That's not good. Yeah, these aren't uh, these aren't stuck at all. So, and I just jinx myself. Nah, it's moving. The nice thing about this is those lock washers are a nice stop spot. So when you go in and you start shaving metal off the top, once you hit the lock washer, it's really easy to tell when to stop cutting metal off. So I bet you this is gonna pop right out of here. There we go. I get under this gasket. See if that helps. Oh, yeah. You know, it's actually, I mean, could be a lot worse in here. This thing's really heavy. So this right here is where you'd want most of your cooling to go. Over here, over here, not so much, but right here in the middle, looks good. So probably for the best that I did take this apart. I mean, I already knew, but sometimes you just like to be, like to have some hope. You know what's impressive about this is like it's all rusted out right here. This was up and completely covered. I'm not sure how it managed to get that corroded, but uh, I'm impressed. Using a uh, 14 millimeter socket on this one since it was all the head was all rounded off. So all my all my nice tools are actually metric because I usually work on car stuff and that's all metric. I think everything switched over in the 80s. Oh yeah, look at that. I'll yeah, this stuff's gonna actually clean up and look really nice. So this is, stuff's in good condition. Yeah, I just popped off that stud. Oh, there we go. I just, these are like completely loose on here. Prepping this stuff for paint. I've had, this is the top of the radiator shell. I've had it sitting in degreaser for about a day. And there is still just grease. Excuse me, dog. There's still just grease like coating the top of this thing. Not the bottom, so I'm not sure how they manage that. 
maybe they ran it for a while with a blown head gasket or something <clears throat> but on the bottom this is the inside the bottom it's pretty pretty clean in there it's just got some rusty stuff in it this is a paint remover Well, as I was stripping the paint off of this stuff, since I'm kind of waiting for the new core to come, I noticed this, I think it broke off of here. I thought I broke it, but it looks like it's been broken for a long time, so I guess it wasn't me. Anyway, I'm gonna try to weld it back on and patch it. Well, that's probably gonna break as soon as I put it back together. Whatever, I tried. Okay, so on the top and the bottom tank here, what I ended up doing is I just took some rags and soaked them in Evaporust and basically just wiped down the inside several times for about an hour. And uh, then the, it pretty much all the, the scaling stuff all popped off pretty easily. So it should be, uh, there shouldn't be any more stuff breaking off into the cooling system now. Well, it came in good shape. So there are some differences I see. So if you look at these tabs here, like this tab comes out, just like it does on here, but on the bottom of there it does not, and there it does. So it looks like they used the same plate. I don't think, I don't think that's gonna be a problem though. Um, I'm pretty sure on here this was the bottom. This goes on the bottom uh, tank, and that goes on the top. But uh, just holding the, the top up to it, I think it'll be okay. You can also tell the arrangement slightly different, like here versus here. But uh, I mean, overall size-wise, it looks the same. The spacing between the fins is obviously much tighter on there than it was here. But that shouldn't matter. I think it'll work fine. I think this is the foot that I welded back on. Yeah. So it looks looks decent, but uh, don't let that fool you. It's gonna pop off as soon as I bolt it down. All right, just checking for any warpage. This thing was, if you remember, this was not leaking where the core contacts this. It was leaking in an actual tube, but it doesn't hurt to check. Yeah, I just like pulled this out of here. So that's a fair amount of threading that I'm missing out on. I looked through the parts manual. There's no seal or O-ring or anything on this. It's just, I guess it must be NPT. All right, I did splurge and buy the actual correct gaskets for this, but I'll still be using Permatex 3 as the go-between, so I clean these surfaces off well. Well, looking at this core, I'm seeing a lot of solder residue. So that's not a big deal. I'm just gonna have to go and just knock this all down and smooth it out. I think it, the, on this side is fine. It's just here where the, this is where it meets the gasket. Both sides are like this. All right, got it nice and smooth. I like to use the palm sander just because it's really low torque. It's uh, a lot harder to screw up with it, especially on this thin metal. If I'm using like a sanding disc on, a, on an angle grinder. 
So the reason this video is so far behind the fuel tank one, well, apart from being horribly sick for a couple weeks, was ordering the new core. So what I did was I searched for the part number, which is, I believe, 4F7979. And I found a bunch of different suppliers. The cheapest was eBay for, I think it was like, I want to say $650. So as soon as I purchased it, the the seller messaged me and says, "Oh, we ran a we ran a forklift through it and damaged all of them, so we can't sell it to you." Which obviously doesn't sound on the up and up. So I looked at it more, and they they're obviously drop shippers. All they do is they just order it from the manufacturer and have it drop shipped. So he said, "Oh, we'll find you another we'll find you another supplier. Just give me some time." So two weeks goes by. And finally he gets back to me and I was kind of distracted by other stuff so I didn't have time to nag him about it too much. He finally gets back to me and he says, I found another supplier. It's going to be, instead of whatever I said, $670, it's, it's like $880 now. So, um, and he said, oh, but they're right in Oregon and they ship for free. So we can just have them ship it right to you. So I, I told him to cancel the order. I tried to do a couple other places that were also drop shippers, and they all were using the same place, which is in Oregon. It's called Radiator Supply Warehouse. So I checked out their website. They make radiators for basically everything. And they have like all the specs on hand for old antique stuff, like this D4. You just give them the part number and they can fab it up. They have they know exactly what they need to do to make it. So I called them up and I asked them. Well, I basically told them straight up, look, I, I was ordering through a drop shipper and they, uh, they weren't being very honest and they told me the price that they could sell, sell it for. I know it's from you guys. Can you just give me that price? I don't have to use them. And they said, yeah. So their, uh, their advertised price for the D4 radiator, I think is 985. And like I said, I got it for 880 or whatever the guy had quoted me. I think what had happened though is the price that he had listed on the eBay auction was from like, you know, a year or so ago. And obviously since then prices have shot up quite a bit. So that's, he, that's how he dealt with it. Instead of telling me the truth, he just lied about it and then wasted two weeks of my time. The one thing I was concerned about was these stick out a little bit and I was worried about them hitting this. I already dry fitted it with no, uh, no gasket though. And there wasn't any issues. On the stock radiator, those fins are lower on the bottom side, probably for that reason. But uh, it looks like it'll be okay. This thing's gonna probably slide off now, isn't it? Oh, easy, easy. Ah, that's terrible. Oh. This is going to look really bizarre. I didn't know what else to do with this thing though, so I just coated it with rust converter and then painted it black. It'll look really weird up next to the, the copper core, but it's going to be covered up anyways with the with the um, hydraulic pump, so it's not a big deal. It's better than just rusting out. Yeah, there's a flat spot right here. This was, and then there's rusty there. It was clearly, this is the one that went here. Now I got them all in. I'm not sure. So this is the one I welded. It looks like I screwed it up, but it's actually, the hole lines up fine. So it's just, maybe it was like that originally. Maybe that's why it was originally broken. It almost looks like this foot twisted out a little bit, but it, it, I mean, the hole lines up, so I don't know. This one's not like that. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's heavy. Oh. It's quite the tightening process. I'm kind of just going all around all four sides and slowly bringing it all together. 
And this is all like calf stuff. I want to snap by over tightening it. I got 48 fasteners on this thing to torque. So this might take a while. Click. Oh, I mean. All right, time for the moment of truth. I got it all locked up here. This might be leaking a little bit. It's wetting. Uh, we're at uh, 12. Wait, I see. Two, four. It's been about 10 minutes. It's down to 10 psi. I can hear it it hissing out around this radiator cap right here. So I'm obviously not going to be able to hold it for very long. I'm just going to go ahead and bubble test this flange around the top and the bottom, and then I'll call that good. I am seeing bubbles coming out here under pressure. So I'm going to go ahead, I, I was doing 33 foot-pounds on these, I'm going to go ahead and jump up to 44 foot-pounds. I think it just needs, needs a little bit more tightening load. It's leaking out between the flange and the gasket, so that tells me it just needs to be a little bit tighter. I'll give that a shot. Well, upping the torque seemed to have helped. It stopped all the fizzes. I think this is actually way more of an extensive test than you're supposed to do. The manual just says to fill it with water and let it sit overnight and make sure no water leaks out. So I'll probably also do that. but. Um, I think it's going to be fine. I mean, it's it held pressure. It was just, you can see the bubbles, it was just leaking out here on that test spot, but it wasn't fizzing out anymore around the, around the seams with the higher torque. I also painted the fan shroud, but I'm not going to put these on yet. I'll wait until uh, I, it's actually the, the radiators installed in the, like, on the engine. Since we're doing cooling stuff, let's talk about the thermostat. This engine did not come with one. Um, I found this. This is like a Gates. I think the part number was 33388. And this seems like a common uh, thermostat that cat guys use to replace the old ones. It fits right in here. Pretty good. I mean, there is. it does sink down a little bit. So I was checking the, uh, the parts diagram. Let me show you. So there's several different thermostat part numbers. Um, and a lot of them, like this one says it comes with a retainer, which holds that thermostat in the housing. But for the serial number of this engine, which is, it's effective with this one, it's just a regulator. There's no retainer that's listed. This is the, this is the housing off of the old engine. And this is, I mean, this is like welded in place with rust. There's no housing or there's no retainer on here either. And there is also that same lip where it's, it's sunk down a little bit. So I think this will be fine. One thing I do have to do though, there's a hole right in there that's drilled through it. That's for a coolant bypass when it's, when it's still closed. So I'll do that over here as well, the same size hole. The only other thing I found in my research was if you look at the shape of this, well, they call it a regulator, but it's a thermostat. So when it's closed, water comes in here and it goes up through this port. But when it opens, the shape of the thermostat blocks the water from going in there and then it goes through the radiator instead. You can see this doesn't have that shape, but I did a little bit of research and it looks like it doesn't really matter. It won't, it, it doesn't matter. So it'll go through and it, and it won't cause an overheating problem. I'm not gonna worry about it. So I guess that's it for the radiator. I've been kind of dreading this for almost a year now, but it wasn't really that bad. I'm a little bit concerned about how it was leaking, but now it's not. But from what I've been reading, what everyone's told me, this is really not even a high pressure cooling system like a modern car. So um, assuming it holds water overnight, it, it, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine. So before I go, if you're a uh, yellow paint enjoyer, you can see the I got the new seat covers in finally. And they are really, really nice. I'm very happy with them. They're not bolted in right now, but the, uh, the quality is very nice. This is like a thicker plywood than the original, and it's been, he put some kind of lacquer or something on it. Very well made. And uh, here's the bottom seat. You can see, just uh, very well done. The stitching is, is very nice. So if you're looking for seats, by the way, this is the guy I bought it from. 
uh, Zane over at Han Tractor Seats. He doesn't have a website, he doesn't really check his email, so you pretty much have to give him a call. But he has a bunch of old stuff, like he has all the templates for it already. So you just give him your serial number, tell him what you want. Many different machines, not just cats. And uh, I think this set was shipped, I think it was a little bit over $400. So worth it in my book, it's very, very nice. I'm very happy with it. So hopefully it's not seeming like I'm dragging this project out, but really what I'm doing right now is I'm waiting for good painting weather. It's been like unseasonably cold out here the last few weeks. And the walls, like the walls all the way around the shop and the floor are very thick concrete. The walls are over a foot thick. So it really holds on to that cold and uh, it's just no good to paint right now, to spray paint. So I needed about a week of reasonably warm weather before it'll be nice enough in here to paint. So that's why I did the radiator and while I'm waiting now, I might start doing some of this other stuff. The hydraulic pump, I'm pretty sure is good. So I'm just gonna clean that up and send it. That I might start getting into while I wait for painting weather because it'd be really nice to have that working and on, um, you know, a little bit after it's, it's driving around. But I mean, the priority still is getting this thing running and moving under its own power. I just, I just have to wait for better weather, unfortunately. It's just the way it is. I was going to end the video right there, but I was kind of up all night thinking about this thing after I finished. I was worrying about it. You know, the bubbles, they did go away, but there's so much surface area where, you know, I might have missed a spot where it was still bubbling. The bubbling was only happening at about 10 PSI. Under that, it wasn't. And I think I'm maybe I'm just overthinking it. I mean, so it held water all night. It didn't leak at all. So according to the manual, that's all you need to do to check it. Um, I have pressure tested it with the cap on, and that cap doesn't hold any pressure. So I just maybe I'm just overthinking it. This is not a high pressure cooling system. I don't think it's designed to be. The overflow comes out right here. Um, it's it just yeah I don't know. If you know better, let me know, but I think this is going to be okay. Um, once I get it back on the tractor, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure it gets good and hot, and I'll drive it around for a while, make sure it's not leaking before I you know, put the blade and the hydraulic pump on. But, yeah, I just maybe I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'll just try it out, and you know, hopefully it works. All right, guys, well, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll be back soon.